Welcome to Maze Lico Challenge. Today's problem is Jump Game 2. Given an array of non-negative integers, nums, you are initially po positioned at the first index of the array. Each element in the array represents your maximum jump length at that position. Now your goal is to reach the last index in the minimum number of jumps. So that's what we want to minimize, the number of jumps. Now you can assume that you can always reach the last index. So that's a little bit different from Jump Game 1, where we were trying to see if we can hit the last index. Here we can assume that we always can. It's the number of jumps that we're trying to minimize. So obviously, first impression here, you could write something recursive, right? You can start at the first position and recursively call each one of the paths that we can take and count the number of jumps that we can get until we hit the last index and return that and then get the minimum one out of all our recursions. But that's going to be exponential time complexity, it'll end up being n factorial. So we're not going to even, even bother with that. Um, we know that's not going to be opti um, accepted. So what we can do, we, of course you can use memoization, and that would actually probably work, but we don't really want to overcomplicate here. What we can do is create a DP array. And all these will be starting with zero. Uh, actually, they'll all be infinites, except for the very first position. And because the very first position, we know we can get there. That's like the base condition. Uh, that requires no jumps, right? So we start with zero. What we'll do is start at the first index and iterate down the number of jumps that we can take. So here we know we can move to index one and index two. And what we'll do is take the minimum between whatever's here and uh, whatever the DP array of that position is plus one. So here is zero plus one equals one. So that's going to be one, and same with here. All these are going to be one. And that makes sense, right? Because at these two indexes, we know we can get there in one jump. Now we'll move to the next next index number, and this is three. Uh, first we'll check here. We'll take the minimum, minimum of whatever's here, or one right here at this first index plus one. That's two, right? But that's less, or that's greater than what we have already here. So we keep one. Here though, this is going to be infinite so we start with two same with here two and then we just move on continually with this algorithm and what we'll find is at the very end this index number is going to be the minimum number of jumps that we could have taken to get there uh, so hopefully that makes sense let's go ahead and code that out we'll first initialize n and we want to create a dp array with float infinites for blank and range of n now the very first position we know we want that to equal zero. So now we just need to write a nested for loop for i in range of n and for j, which is going to be a number of indexes we can move forward in range of nums i. But uh, we don't want to count to zero. We don't care about that. And we also want to make sure that we actually move this many positions. So that's going to be plus one here. Now, if i plus j is in bounds, it's less than n. Well, then let's update our DP array for i plus j to equal the minimum between dp i plus j or dp i plus 1. Now, at the very end, we just want to return whatever is at last in our dp. So, let's see if this works. Okay, that looks like it's working, so let's submit it. And there we go, accepted. So that surprises me that this gets accepted. Time complexity-wise, it's n squared, as well as O of n space. But as we were coding this out, you might kind of realize that it's kind of pointless doing this whole minimum looking backward thing. Like once we update this dpi plus j, it's like we already know that's, that's, that's that. Like we don't really ever need to update it again. Um, so really, you don't actually even need to do this nested for loop. We can do this in a greedy approach. What we could do, as long as we keep track of all the important uh, variables, we can start with uh, keeping track of what our max position that we can reach is, as well as the max position that we kind of reached before. Uh, so what I mean by that is, say we start with here, Starting with zero, how far can we go? Well, we know we can get all the way up here, right? So great. Now we'll move forward and we'll find that at three, well, we can actually move all the way up to the end here. But we're going to keep track of that in a different, some different um, 
variable. This is gonna be the, the max that we can reach, and this is gonna be the last max that we could have reached. And up and only until we hit, as we iterate down, that we hit this, that's when we'll increase the number of jumps. So here, like starting with here, we increase jump to one. And then we find that once we hit one, we've hit this part. And we want to um, see if we'll update this last position all the way up to the max one that we could hit so far. We'll increase our jump and and we'll just keep continuing that way. And we'll find that we're not gonna increase jump anymore. We'll be up to two jumps at that point. And then we'll stop. Well, one thing to note is we'll stop right here. We don't need to count at the very last index. All right, so um, hopefully that makes sense. What We'll start by initializing some variables that we need. We need the i uh, to iterate down our, our array, the number of jumps that we've taken, the minimum number of jumps, as well as the last position, the max that we could have hit like at, at one point, as well as keeping track of the real max pos position that we can get that we can hit. So all of these will be zero here. So while i is less than n minus one, what we'll do is uh, first calculate our max position. The max position is going to be the max of max position and it will be i, right? This, this index plus nums i. Now if last i equals our last position that we could have hit so far, it starts with zero, but we're going to update this to be the max position that we've calculated. And this is where we're going to increase our jump, plus, plus one. And here we always need to increase our i. And at the very end, jump should be minimized. Um, that'll be the minimum number of jumps that we could have taken to hit the last position. So it's kind of like this little flip-flop here with this last position, the max position. Let's see that equals two. Let's go ahead and submit it. And there we go. So this is actually old n time, and we use constant. Well, no, we still have this DP array, so uh, it's still O of n space. But still, O of n time complexity is way better than O of n squared. Uh, so I would say this is the best solution. Uh, let's see. Oh, wait. I don't need this. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, that's silly. I mean, we don't even need that. So it's O of 1 space, right? Let's make sure that works. Yeah, so it's O of 1 space. Okay, great. I think uh, that explains it. Thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.